Hey, good morning. Welcome to Horse of Retirement Adventures. Today I'm going to go ahead and finish up my NEMA 2000 system and hopefully have everything working on my Lawrence FS9 that I just purchased a while back. Um, I like it. I like the FS9, but I really need to have monitor my engine and my fuel levels. So um, since we talked about the NEMA 2000, I went to the store and I bought me a new NEMA backbone and a new drop cable that goes up to my Lorentz. And I did buy me a new fuel or a new uh, engine gauge. I've already got that installed. This is the older gauge. That's, I don't know what that is to tell you the truth. One's engine and one is, oh, one's power. You gotta have power to it. This here on my, on my NEMA, I put this back on there because that's a voltage isolator. So right now, all these, these four units, these, this one here I just capped. But these four have 12 volts on it all the time. I'm going to isolate, and uh, I, think you, I think you should, I'm going to isolate the voltage coming over to my new stuff, which would be uh, my new fuel sensor gauge that I just bought. The other one was bad. And uh, I got a brand new connector to go with that. So I'm gonna connect this to this unit here, just like that. And then you screw that in. I have an ignition switch power that I'm gonna put in the first connector right here. And what that does, it isolates my power to my fuel gauge. So my fuel gauge is only on when I turn the power on. If I hooked it up to this one here, then my fuel gauge would have 12 volts to it all the time. I don't think that's, I don't think that's necessary. And then I'll leave that open in case I want to add something else to it anyway. So again, an isolator, a resistor, which is 120 ohms, and another resistor, which is 120 ohms. You need to have both resistors on the end of your backbone or it's not gonna work. All right, well, I'm gonna hook it up and uh, see what I can do. Hopefully everything works. I've already traced down my fuel line power, my sensor. It says pink one right here. And boats, pink line, pink uh, wires mean that's it's your fuel gauge. So I, I went all the way down to my gas tank. I found it, it is pink. So I, I tracked that all the way down to where it connects to my uh, old, my old one, which is this one right here. Fuel lever sensor. Fuel level lever. Level, fuel level, there we go, sensor. This is the old one. It got real, real, real hot. And uh, it did not, sh it didn't work. So I went ahead and bought a new one. Okay, and then I'm gonna hook it up and I'm gonna turn on my uh, Lorantz and I'm gonna watch everything come up and uh, hopefully it does this time around. So I got all brand new everything and uh, cross your fingers. Let's hope it works, more to come. Okay, I found my, uh, and all this rat nest, I found my two wires I need for my fuel sensor that goes down to the tank. My pink and my black. I'm gonna connect my red to pink and my black to black with these heat shrink inline connectors. And then I'll shrink those up after, uh, there we go, I'm sorry about that. I'll shrink shrink that up after I check, it, make sure everything works and then I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and heat shrink that. Heat shrink just provides just additional safety and so no nothing gets corroded so um i'll put this on red to pink black to black kink those and then i'll uh plug them in i might as well go ahead and do this this is the ignition switch right here and again they just screw right in to here into the nema backbone You do want to get it nice and tight. Okay. All right. Again, voltage isolator. So this, when I plug in my, my unit, my fuel sensor, I won't have power until I turn my key on. And then that'll power that up. All right. The rest of the stuff, it can have power on it all the time. So, uh, Okay, I'm getting ready to connect these two wires, plug it in, and uh, 
Turn it on. Okay, more to come. Today is a happy day. Oh, happy day. Okay, my device list, I just went ahead and refreshed it. I have my Suzuki engine connect. And I, I just put in my, I put my name on there, Paul. Fluid level, fuel tank. So guess what? My NEMA 2000 is actually working right now. After four days of uh, intense working, trying to figure out what's all wrong, I did find that my uh, Suzuki Connect engine was bad, and then I found out my level, uh, fuel tank level was bad. But what's really bad and I'll, and, and, is I called Lawrence and I told them the issues I was having with the NEMA 2000, and Lawrence saying that the bus was off. I told him everything I was finding, and what Lawrence technician said, the guy from uh, India, uh, he said that my port for my Lawrence Elite 9 was broken for the NEMA 2000. After all the stuff I told him what was wrong, what was going on, he said the port was bad. So he said I needed to send it in, get repaired. It takes like two to four weeks to repair it. So they send it back. So, uh, I didn't take that answer whatsoever. I did some more research, uh, figured out myself that it was not the bad port. I, I connected it into the Simrad, and the Simrad said the same thing. I connected it, I hooked up my C10, what was left of my C10 gauge. It said the same thing. So all three of these things can't say the same thing. So I eliminated what that guy was telling me was wrong, uh, being wrong. So luckily I did that, and then I went ahead and bought these things. Now my engine connects connected, my fluid level is there, and I want to configure that. So I have a center tank, that's fuel. Tank size, I have 60 gallons, 0060. Hit that. Are you sure you want to change the tank size? I do. Okay, I'm back. I figured out how to go ahead and do the fuel fluid levels. So I went to, you go to device list. And uh, right here is my fluid level, my, my name on it. I hit that. I uh, hit calibrated. I calibrated it to full. Hit calibrate. And then I did all that. So I'll do that again. It was calibrated. Everything should be good. Uh, configured. Everything's configured correctly. Data. 60 gallons. And it should show up how many gallons I have left. So, full. Calibrate. Okay. Now. Let's just see. It's already been configured. Data. Let's see if it shows up on my tank. Fuel remaining. It's uh, it's not all the way accurate yet. Thirty-nine percent fuel remaining. Even though I went ahead and calibrated it to full, it senses that I only have thirty-seven gallons left. Um, which is cool. That tells me how much gas I have. So now I'll go ahead and fill it up and see if it goes to, uh, to 60 gallons, which I'm assuming it's going to. All right. So everything's working. All right. Paul out. Now let's look at my Suzuki. Engine connect. Do I want to reconfigure that? Hold on a second. Let's just go back to the beginning of a lot. Okay, see? This is great because my Suzuki thing just showed up. Never did before. So I got my Suzuki gauges. I hit that. Tells me my engine hours. My fuel's not on yet because I haven't uh, calibrated that. It's got my trim on there that wasn't on there before. And I, got, I hooked that trim up. Water temperature, the date and time, and that is in neutral. So I think if I put it in gear... It's changes to end gear. I mean, that's pretty cool. Take it out of gear. 
facts are neutral. Everything's working perfect. I'm telling you right now, I can't be any happier about this at all. I'm going to look, I'm going to do some more stuff on my Elite, uh, some shortcuts. And then uh, once I figure out some shortcuts, I'll show you guys how to do some shortcuts on this. But, uh, whoa, what a happy day. It took me a long time. I know more than I need to know about the NEMA 2000. So if anybody's got any issues with the NEMA 2000, I'm your man. Also, another thing Lawrence does, Lawrence doesn't tell you is that where you put your SD card. On this unit, you have to peel this back, and right there's your card holder. So I'm going to get my other card, put that in there. For the life of me, I couldn't find out where that was at. <laughs> so, all right, more to come. What's really nice about this as, as well is that you can just hit this, and you've got everything you need. You can hit your chart. And there, there's where I'm at. And you can put anything you want on this chart. Just by hitting the power button, add it over, over, overlay, and then you can add whatever you want to. You can select what, what you want to add on here. You can go to my go to engine fuel tank. I can add my fuel tank on there. Uh, fuel level. As, as you've seen, it just showed up right there. It's going to show in there, in there. Fuel remaining. That's going to show up right there. See what else I want, might want to put on there. I think this is about it. Now let's say I don't want that here. I'll just grab it and put it right up here. If I want my fuel tank information, I might want to put it right here. All right. My uh, water temperature, I, I, you can just pick it and go wherever you want to go with that. I want to put mine up here. And then my depth, of course, it's not going to show because, you know, I'm, I'm not in the water. So that's how you do it. And once you get done, you just hit the save button right here. And then everything's saved right here. My fuel, how much fuel I, I have left, uh, all that stuff. Miles per hour, uh, date and time is right down in here. And you can do that on this unit. You can do that on anything that you want to put that on there. You, know, you can go to your sonar and you can put whatever you want on that. I went ahead and did my water temperature here, my depth, uh, my range. And uh, I mean, I, I don't know what else I can put on there, but... Uh, let me hit the button. Edit overlay. Oh, I think that's it. I think I got everything on there that you can. Oh, add. Let's see if there's anything else. Water temperature, water just structure, depth, speed. Um, fuel tank. I guess I could put my fuel tank there if I wanted to watch or look at that. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you can put on there. Uh, engine. There's nothing on the engine I can put on there time i can put my local date and time on there and it goes right there uh fuel tank if i wanted to i could put that on there as well but i'm not going to because I, I just i'll just put it on my other one then i add then i hit save and there's my date and time <laughs> pretty easy stuff i got to figure out how to hide this uh this uh board border right here my control panel because i want to make my screen bigger I got a feeling I know how to do that, but uh, I mean, let's try it real quick. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Systems, um, advance, I think it's user interface, hide, auto hide menu. Let's see what that does. Well, automatically hide your menu if no user interaction occurs in 15 seconds. All right, let's just see if that works. That's, I'm thinking that's the menu. So in 15 seconds, let's see if that disappears. If not, I guess it stays there. But it's not been 15 seconds yet. Look at that! I'm a genius. I, sometimes I just... I just got to pat myself on the back. So if I want to use that, I just hit the, the menu bucket. Look at that, it just comes back up. And then in 15 seconds, it disappears. My whole screen's wider. I can't be any happier. All I can say is pull out, hit the subscribe button. And if you liked it, hit thumbs up. Tell me how you liked it. If you didn't like it, then uh, I, I guess I don't know what to tell you. I'm just doing my best. All right, pull out.